Hi, it's Forrest Carr, the bashful bloviator, as heard on Tucson's Power Talk 1210. I'm going to be experimenting with trying to do some video blogs on occasion, and this is one of them. So I want to tell you something about a subject we discussed on the radio today, and as I do this, I'll be referring to the screen from time to time. I'll be breaking eye contact with the camera on occasion, like we do on the radio, to refer uh, to my notes. So this, this may be a little rough, but I want to tell you about uh, an issue that I've been dealing with over the past several days in trying to get information out of the federal government regarding immigration. I don't care where you stand on immigration, if you're pro-immigration, against it, pro-illegal immigration, against it, illegal immigration, whatever your views are, I hope you would agree that as an American, we deserve the right, or we deserve to get answers from our federal government. The federal government owes us some answers. Now, in one of the great pieces of absurdist literature of all time, Joseph Heller's Catch-22, uh, discuss the method by which bomber pilots may claim insanity for the purpose of getting out of a dangerous mission. The gist of it is that if you're willing to fly, you're clearly nuts because it's dangerous. You could get killed. Why would you want to do that? But if you try to get out of the flight, for instance, by claiming insanity, then you're committing a rational act and therefore you cannot claim to be insane. So either way, you go on the mission and bureaucracy wins. Now, if you are in government, how would you apply this type of absurdist approach to the function of providing news and information to the press and public in such a way to as to ensure that the bureaucracy emerges victorious always? How about creating a press office that the press can't call? Yeah, that'd work. Sounds pretty good, huh? Would you believe this is exactly what the Department of Homeland Security has done? Uh, if you're a reporter and you don't want information, then this press office is perfect for you because all the facts you need are and don't intend to get are right here in the press office, right there in the press office waiting for you. But if you do want the information, well, yes, we could give you that phone number, but then we'd have to kill you. Now, call it Catch-23. I swear I'm not making this up. Well, you know, maybe I did exaggerate a little about the, the part about killing you. But I hit upon this discovery when I set out to penetrate the veil of secrecy behind the current immigration crisis. Uh, I didn't really expect to be able to do it all by myself, but I thought I'd give it the old college try, see what I could learn, and report back to my radio listeners. DHS has, for the most part, stiff-armed any and all media attempts to find out very much about what is going on at our borders. For instance, how many border crossers has the administration placed on uh, planes and buses? And uh, to what extent, uh, at what ex expense to taxpayers? How many of the migrants have done what they're supposed to do and have checked in with immigration authorities once they've reached their final destination? Where are they going? And so on. Now, for the most part, media have gone along with this, this information shutout uh, rather meekly. Uh, this is why you've seen news reports in recent weeks containing phrases like the one I'm about to read here, quoted from the recent Associated Press article about the current immigration crisis, quote, an undisclosed number have been released into the community with notices to report back to immigration officials or in court at a later date. That single word, undisclosed, summarizes and then blithely skips right over a startling fact. The Obama administration is keeping the media, and therefore the public, largely in the dark about the flood of illegal border crosses. It's making assurances that everything's under control, while at the same time seeing to it that you can't easily verify the facts for yourself. It's even keeping this information secret from your local law enforcement officials. Now, currently, there are some perfectly good reasons to keep some kinds of information secret, but I have found in over many years in journalism that when politicians withhold the facts, you cannot assume or blindly trust that they're doing it with the public's best interests in mind. In fact, I learned you have to assume the opposite, that they're keeping the public in the dark in order to serve their own selfish ends. Uh, such as the need to prevent embarrassment or, or to keep facts off the table that might serve to undermine a political position. And those are not appropriate reasons for withholding the public's business from the public. So, this week I set out to try to follow the advice I always used to give out as a television news director. Don't take no comment for uh, an answer. Don't accept being shut out. And trying to be reasonable about it, I allotted three days for the info quest. Now, I am not an immigration beat reporter. So in calling the Department of Homeland Security with questions, uh, I was not able to resort to a Rolodex or anything of that nature containing a stockpile of useful phone numbers that a normal beat reporter would have. So instead, I, I simply looked up the official media contacts webpage for DHS, and then I called what seemed like the appropriate number. 
uh, a nice lady who answered the phone told me, uh, with a perfectly straight face, at least I assume it was, we were on the phone, but uh, she said that the office that I had reached, which was the media office, the press office for the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Service, was not the office for the media to call with questions about U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, despite its label. Okay, so fine. The obvious question at that point was, so what is the correct number? And that's what I proceeded to ask. The answer I got led to a Dutch tilt moment. Now, you've seen Dutch tilt many times in your life, although you may not have known what it is. When a, a film director wants you to feel just a little bit off kilter, like the world is slightly askew, they will tilt the camera maybe 10 degrees off the horizontal, and now you feel just a little bit strange, but not necessarily knowing why. The, a comment had that effect on me in response to my question of what's the number. Here's the comment that caused me to feel that way. She said, the nice young lady on the phone said, oh yes, there is a press office. You can't have the telephone number. We don't give it out to the press. And she flatly refused to give it, refused to, give it to me. So let me repeat that, okay? Your Department of Homeland Security has a press office to handle media inquiries, but its phone number is secret. This sort of makes it tough for members of the press to direct press questions to the press office, wouldn't you think? But the office uh, does have an email address, and it turns out that's the only way to contact it unless you're armed with inside contact info. Uh, in fairness, beat reporters for national news organizations probably have developed contacts inside the office. Sure they have, but reporters for local TV and radio stations across the country who don't normally have to call Washington with immigration enforcement questions but are having to do so now, not so much. They wouldn't necessarily have those contact numbers. So I've dealt with DHS many times before as a journalist and was very well aware of its preference for ducking microphones and cameras and hiding behind written statements. But during my last major go around with the agency, I had no problem getting a spokesperson on the phone whom I could then try my best verbal arguments, right? Wheedle, cajole, uh, tickle them under the chin, whatever, trying to get information out of them. The secret press office phone number takes that duck the media whole, uh, tactic to a whole new level. Uh, not only uh, do none of its press officers, uh, none of its press officers, none, none of the press officers has to waste precious bureaucratic time bickering with pesky reporters on the phone with this tactic. They can simply deflect any inquiries to the email inbox and then be done with it without so much as having to hear a re reporter splutter in, in protest. Wow. Now, what was it that President Obama promised us about how this administration would handle requests for information? The way to make government responsible is to hold it accountable. And the way to make government accountable is to make it transparent so that the American people can know exactly what decisions are being ma made, how they're being made, and whether their interests are being well served. <laughs> okay, but I digress. Now, for the moment withholding my natural journalistic tendency toward overtly expressed cynicism, on Tuesday I dutifully fired off a very polite email uh, to the address I was given in which I stated the nature of my inquiry and said I'd like to get someone on the phone for the purpose of exploring the possibility of arranging an interview for later in the week, the following day or the day after being ideal. I did get a quick response. Here's what it said verbatim. Hi, Forrest. We are unable to provide someone to go on the air today. Feel free to visit, and she gave me a website, for FAQs. As I said, pure genius. My email was short. Obviously, the person receiving it had not taken the time to read it. She turned me down for an interview on a day I had not requested, pointed me to a web page that did not answer my questions, and then went on about her business. Case closed. It was a thing of beauty. Now, amount of taxpayer-funded man hours invested in this brush-off maybe 15 seconds, 30 max. Never let it be said the Obama administration isn't concerned about the efficient use of public resources. So the next morning I called the DH Office of Public Affairs and went through the whole thing again. Different office. Nice young man confirmed that yes, the press office number is secret. No, I can't call anyone there directly. He suggested a second email. So I pointed out the last one had resulted in a, a quick blow off and asked whether he knew of any secret tips for producing a better response. He suggested that I put some key phrases in bold print. And I recorded my end of the conversation. It would have been illegal to record his. Here's a little clip from that exchange. Uh, you have any uh, special tips or pointers in mind for how to get them to actually uh, answer my question without simply referring me to the, the FAQ page, which does not, not answer my questions? Okay, put things in bold or isolated.
Bold print. Okay. So I did that, right? I wrote a second, very polite email in which I bolded certain key phrases. Uh, I'm trying to get someone from the press office on the phone, I wrote in bold. I'm looking to chat with someone from the press office in person about the possibility of getting some questions answered about the current immigration crisis and so on. That email did get a quick response. The press officer, same one as before, now promised to call me. Two hours later, she hadn't. I sent her a reminder. And this time, this succeeded in, in prying her phone number out of her. So, Eureka, right? I think I'm home free. When I called, though, she was she said, hey, I'm in a deadline panic. I can't talk to you. I'll call you back. You, the, the things you want are on the internet. Uh, the CDP's got them up. I said, oh, great. Give me that address. I can't. I can't. I got to go. So, well, at least tell me real quick, just who's buying the bus tickets for the immigrants? She said, we're not buying them. I got to go. So that was new information. I hadn't seen that reported elsewhere, that the government is not buying bus tickets. So, okay, that's good. So she said she would call me back in 10 minutes. 30 minutes later, I send her another reminder um, and say, can I at least get that website address? She sends it to me. I'd already seen it. Doesn't answer my questions. Wrote her an email saying that. She wrote me back saying she'd have someone call me. And that was two days ago, actually closer to three. I sent follow-up emails. I sent follow. I made follow-up phone calls. Nothing. They're done. Case closed. It's a thing of beauty. Now, this would be hilarious if it weren't serious. No one should have to hold their hat in their hand. And I was very polite, right? I never gave him any tood because I know that's what happens when you do that. They're done with it. Gave him no tood. Had my hat in my hand the whole time. Uh, no one should have to hold their hat in their hand when approaching our government. We have no king or queen. Citizens of this country are supposed to be sovereign. That's the theory. In reality, of course, the reality is sometimes different. Um, a government that keeps its citizens in the dark is hostile to those citizens. And that's really my point. It's absurd what they're doing. I don't care where you stand on immigration. Hopefully you want the information you need to be able to make up your mind. That's why I've publicly supported officials who give information, and I've been pretty hard on those who don't. You deserve the information. We participate in the process of setting public policy. You need the information to be able to make up your mind about what the appropriate pu public policy should be, regardless of where you stand on immigration. This is not about whether you're for it or against it, whether you're alarmed by the current situation or embrace it. You deserve the information. And that's my point and the point of this blog entry. Thanks for letting me bloviate. I bloviate all the time on Tucson's 1210 Talk Radio. Uh, look us up on the internet, Power Talk 1210. Uh, we stream. My show airs from 10 a.m. to noon Mountain Standard Time. That uh, corresponds to Pacific uh, Daylight Time this time of year. So please give us a listen. Check out my blog, The Bashful Bloviator. Just look up those words on Bing or Google. It'll take you right to it. I'm going to start getting in the habit of trying to post some video clips like this one on occasion in addition to what I've already been doing. So uh, thanks for letting me, letting me talk at you, and uh, I hope you visit my blog and my radio show.